<laughs> Going to go back live to Sierra Nevada College to the Tahoe Science Center with Shannon. Morning, Shannon. Thanks, Todd. And we are back here at the Tahoe Science Center here at the Virtual Lab Exhibit, which Heather's going to tell us a little bit about what's going on in here. Um, Heather, what are some of the highlights in the Virtual Lab? Yeah, so we talk a lot about Lake Tahoe's food web. And so we have some really cool little zooplankton, like this little guy, Daphnia, on the screen. I don't know if you can see her or him. Um, we also have a bunch of different fish species. So we have, this is a Lahontan cutthroat trout in the tank, a little baby. And then we have about 150 babies in the, just growing. They, we had eggs delivered, and we have a project together with um, some other local organizations. We get eggs from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and we take those eggs and deliver them to schools for the the trout in the classroom project and the kids raise the um, eggs from little tiny eggs up through juvenile fish and right now we have a bunch of little tiny babies swimming around it's very exciting and those will get released into uh, Lake Tahoe for um, to try to bring the Lahontan cutthroat trout back that was the original top predator we also have some fish that are non-native species, and Diana was uh, feeding them, or we're going to give them some feeding over there, and those are the bass and the bluegill and the goldfish that have been found in the Tahoe Keys. So we talk a lot about um, the different native species and the non-native species. Um, a big one of concern is um, the quagga mussel here. So we have an Asian clam, which is um, this shelled clam. And that lives in the sediment, under the sediment. But a bigger concern is this quagga mussel, which is, you can see this propeller is covered in quagga mussels. And we do not have quagga mussels in Lake Tahoe, but there's a big concern that they could get into the lake and be majorly disruptive. We'd not be able to walk barefoot on the shores if these shells that are really sharp started washing on the shores. They would cover every propeller, boat, rope, and so we got to keep those out, and so the boat inspections are for um, keeping these out of the lake. Okay, so you guys do a lot of uh, education on pretty much prevention of invas invasive species as well as what you guys are doing here, right? Yeah, so we uh, are talking about what's native in the lake and how can we protect our native food web, and then what things do we need to make sure don't get into the lake um, to, to also protect our native food web. And we don't want to see an algae-infested Lake Tahoe. We want to keep Tahoe blue, and uh, so we want people to know what that means and what it takes. And um, so you can come here to the Tahoe Science Center um, and learn about the research from UC Davis, the University of Nevada, Reno, the Desert Research Institute, so all the local Local institutions that are working up here to protect the lake. Very nice. So come check it out and see what you can do on a personal level and what these guys here are doing on a bigger, bigger scale here to keep Tahoe blue. And thank you again, Heather. And we will be back to check out a little bit more of the Tahoe Science Center in a bit. But right now, we will go back to Todd in the South Shore. Thanks, Shannon. We'll be right back with your seven-day Lake Tahoe forecast after this.